In this lesson, we're going to talk about chemical processes and we're going to learn how to balance a chemical equation. First, in a chemical process, or also known as a chemical change, a new substance is produced. Recall from the last section that in a physical process, a substance changes form but still remains the same substance. Chemical equations represent chemical changes. So what are some examples of chemical changes? Well, if you have two colorless solutions and you mix the two solutions and you see a color change, most likely a new substance has been formed. That would indicate a chemical change. When you mix two substances together and you see bubbling, that's indication that a gas has been formed. Again, a chemical change. If you mix two solutions together and a solid forms, that's also an example of a chemical change. So, as I said before, chemical equations represent chemical changes. We write a reaction with the reactants on the left side of the arrow and products on the right side of the arrow. So these would be the reacting substances and here would be the new substances formed. We write the reactants and products as chemical symbols or chemical formulas. Let's take a look at what chemical symbols are. Chemical symbols represent elements. And we can find chemical symbols for all of the elements on the periodic table. Note that symbols like carbon, um, nitrogen, oxygen, Notice that they are uppercase letters. Notice that some of the symbols have two letters. The first letter is always uppercase, and the second letter is always lowercase. So for example, the symbol for cobalt is right here, and it's a capital C and a lowercase o. You don't write it as a capital C with a capital O. Because actually, this stands for the compound carbon monoxide and not the element cobalt. A chemical formula utilizes chemical symbols. So elements combine to form compounds. We represent compounds by chemical formulas. We use subscripts in chemical formulas to show how many atoms of different elements are in a given compound. Let's take water for an example. The chemical formula for water is right here. And this shows that there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Note that a subscript of one is not shown. So, Again, water contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Let's take a look at another chemical formula. This is the chemical formula for sucrose, or just plain old table sugar. Notice we have 12 carbon atoms, 22 hydrogen atoms, and 11 oxygen atoms. Again, if no subscript is given for an element, just like in the oxygen in the formula for water, a subscript of one is understood. We just don't write it out. Let's take a look at an example of a chemical equation. We burn natural gas all the time. We use it to cook food. So when we turn on the stove, the natural gas called methane combines with oxygen, or actually it burns in oxygen, to produce two new substances, carbon dioxide and water. Now usually we write a chemical equation out using chemical formulas. So using chemical formulas, here we have the chemical formula for methane, one carbon with four hydrogens, and here is oxygen. Notice that the oxygen in the air that we breathe contains two oxygen atoms. So this is actually molecular oxygen. So the reactants are methane and oxygen. The products formed are carbon dioxide and 
water. Now, chemical formulas don't tell us how the atoms are connected, but structural formulas like this do. So we see that we have a central carbon atom for methane, and bonded to that central carbon atom is four hydrogens. Here is the structural formula for the oxygen. Notice we have two oxygen atoms, and each vertical line stands for a bond. Molecular oxygen have a double bond. Here we have the structural formula for carbon dioxide. Again, a carbon and two oxygens. But we see that the oxygens are both bonded to the carbon. And then, of course, water. We have the oxygen with two hydrogens bonded to it. Another way of representing molecules is by using space filling models. So you're going to find these in your textbook and other textbook quite often representing different molecules. Now, let's get back to chemical reactions. We can think of a chemical reaction as a rearrangement of atoms. So what does that mean? Well, on the reactant side, you have so many oxygen atoms, so many carbon atoms, so many hydrogen atoms. So the products can only contain carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms. And that's because according to the law of conservation of mass, matter is neither created nor destroyed. So atoms are not just going to appear on one side and they don't just disappear. In a chemical reaction, the total mass of the reactants must equal the total mass of products formed. So again, as I said, atoms don't just appear and they don't disappear. So that means that we must have the same types of atoms on both sides of the equation and the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the equation. So in other words, we must balance a chemical equation. We balance a chemical equation using coefficients. Coefficients are numbers that we put in front of each chemical formula that will multiply all of the atoms in the formula. Let's take a look at our equation here. Now, notice we have one carbon atom on the reactant side. We have four hydrogen atoms on the reactant side and four oxygen atoms. This two multiplies these two atoms. So two times two is four. Note on the product side, we have one carbon atom. We have four hydrogen atoms. Again, this two multiplies the two hydrogen atoms to give us four hydrogen atoms. And we have two oxygen atoms plus two oxygen atoms for a total of four oxygen atoms. We have the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the chemical equation. This chemical equation is balanced. One thing you must keep in mind, you can change coefficients, but you can never change subscripts. Why can't we change subscripts? Well, if we change the subscripts, then we change the chemical formula, and we would not have the same substance. So subscripts can never be changed. You can add coefficients in front of the chemical formulas. That's not a problem. But don't ever change the subscripts. Let's balance a chemical equation. Here we have nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to produce ammonia. Notice in parentheses we have the lowercase g. That indicates that we have a gas. We'll talk about the other labels a little bit later. Let's count how many atoms of each type are on the reactant side and on the product side. On the reactant side, I have two nitrogen atoms and two hydrogen atoms. On the product side, I have one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. Well, I need to balance the equation. 
what I should do is put a 2 in front of the ammonia. And that will give me two nitrogen atoms. So I put the coefficient 2 in front of the ammonia. So now I have two nitrogen atoms on both sides. But now I have to balance for hydrogen. Because by putting the 2, the coefficient 2, in front of the ammonia, I now have six hydrogen atoms on the product side, and I still only have two hydrogen atoms on the reactant side. So what I can do is put a coefficient of 3 in front of the hydrogen here. When I do that, I end up with 3 times 2, six hydrogen atoms on the reactant side. So now let's check to see if nitrogen and hydrogen is balanced. I have two nitrogen atoms on the reactant side, two nitrogen atoms on the product side. I have six hydrogen atoms on the reactant side, and two times three, six hydrogen atoms on the product side. Here we have a balanced chemical equation.